Hello everyone, before the actual video, I'm gonna start talking about the new season of Stripe map. I wanna show you the Wheel of Destiny, which I have spent in my recording. And unfortunately, the recording is uh, not accurate. The microphone was, I don't know why, it sounded like it was uh, robotic. So it was kinda sounding like shit. So I had to do it all over again. And since I couldn't do the Wheel of Destiny uh, obviously again, I have put you that now here in front of the actual video. So yeah, I hope you're gonna enjoy the video guys. Let me know in the comments what you think about the new map. And yeah, we see us then on the next one. I wanna get all four here. So I get the most value out of this wheel. But so far I'm pretty unlucky, damn. That really sucks. I'm very unlucky. Holy shit. Alright, let's see, come on. Let's buy here the the ten ones. Oof. Damn. I'm really not lucky here right now. That really sucks. Come on, guys. What the fuck is that here? Hello? Nothing. I just got one so far. 30 tickets. I just got one. All right, let's go. Come on. Please. For the fuck's sake of... Yes, let's go. All right, I got Dampel, that makes two out of four. Let's go, let's go, let's go, guys. Come on, two more. Two fucking more. At least if I'm not getting them, like, give me, like, yes, exactly. That would, you know, give me more chances. Like, get these 15 hours out, get these medals out, so the overall percentage is getting higher for the other stuff. There you go. All right, one more 15 hours. Medits are out. Damn, shit. It's not looking good here. Come on, give me one. One more before I run out. That's really not looking good, guys. It's really not looking good. Holy fucking shit. All right, let's go for these. That makes four more twice. Come on. Looking not good, guys. It's looking not good here. Come on. Yes, let's go. All right, that makes three out of four. I got two more twice. Two more twice. Please, come on. Please, just give it to me. Please, that would be so fucking good. No, it was so close. Come on. Please. Shit. Damn. All right. We all know what that means. Now at least give me him fast, so I don't need to waste so many tokens, uh, tickets, and get some gems back. Oh, that is so fucking unlucky. Holy shit. I'm really not having the streaming luck when I do uh, video recording. Holy shit. That really, really sucks. Like, bro, what the fuck is that? You <laughs> just give it to me. Holy. Finally. Damn. Took way too long. Took fucking way too long. There you go. The rest. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another video from me. Beast of my name. And today, 
we have a live stream going on in the background while I'm right now recording the video. I already said it in the live stream. I wanted to drop it already as a video out. Unfortunately, the audio uh, in that recording was fucked up for my microphone. So I need to redo it now. So I thought, hey, why not combining it with a live stream and doing the video live on stream together? You know, when we have also the chat here. So I think that's pretty cool. Hey, Kimmy, welcome to Um I like this, you know, style of what Guns is also doing. So, all right, let's start into the stream and the video here. So the new season of Strife map is out, right? We have a new season map we have a new policy tree we have also season talents we don't have the mastery skills on this particular map we have the season talents back which i pretty like i like this um you know but you're having these different kind of map where you have different type of stuff i really like that they have took that over from rise of kingdoms i think that's a good thing you know so we're having not always the same type of shit you know but you really can choose, okay, on this map you have this type of stuff, on this map you have this type of stuff. So you have some flexibility in terms also of content, you know. Um, I like this style and I hope they're going to keep it up. So I would say we're going to have a first look on the map because I really enjoy the map here to be honest. So when I earlier looked on the map, I was like impressed about the amount of passes we have guys. Did you realize we're having seven passes in that map yeah you see that here pass seven that is insane you know um and you know why this is so insane is because of pass five and pass six in particular these two passes making this map extremely interesting it makes it in extremely interesting because let's think about that right you having your two zones here, right? Let's say you are starting off to fight against each, each other, you know? Like you are not allies, your neighbor is not your friend, you know? Um, so let's say this year, the, our zone fighting against Verona, right? And we winning, right? And then pass three opens and Azaz, whoever's in Azaz is the ally of whoever's in Verona, right? So what they could do is going all the way over, fuck us up, right? And then go to pass five, right? And with a pass five, they can help their camp in Rowona to recapturing Argelon, you know? So with a zone three opening, you can have already like zone one opening, like zone, uh, zone two fighting again, right? And then... Is the difference that pass six combines when all these zone three. So let's say you have your other ally in Steroden, right? And Steroden couldn't help in Argolon, but they can help at the level six to push into F Frosmere, right? So then it turned from a two versus three, uh, uh, from a, from a uh, one versus two into uh, a two versus three, right? You have Elsas and Verona versus whoever's this here and then these two zone. You see what I what I mean with that? It is insane. Like you have so many different outcomes with these amount of passes. It's gonna be really interesting to see on these huge KVKs how we're gonna play around with that type of style. Um like EIS, Noah, you know, all these big kingdoms, EDS also, you know, all of them. I'm I'm really gonna be looking forward to how they're gonna play around that that's gonna be really interesting and then i really need to say the last zone looks also really interesting i like that you have way less buyers right um and i think also it is actually now like from the build path pretty even it doesn't look like on the first moment of checking it out that someone having an advantage over getting to a dragon as fast as it looks like pretty even to everyone. So, and also I like this, um, I like this big plateau over here at the dragon with like no fucking choke points at all, you know. And then 
you have the ramps, but there is no spire, right? This is gonna be really interesting, you know, because you, like, it's, like, you need to drop here a fucking uh, bastion to hold this, right? So, I would say once you have pushed down here, like, at least you need, like, I don't know, three sp uh, bastions, right, for each ramp here. The thing is just, I think that the right, uh, the right side have a little advantage over when it comes to a 2 versus 2 versus 2 on this map, right? Because whoever is here, having like the connection towards these is going to be faster than to these, right? So I think that's the only disadvantage for the left and south side here, that the, the right side the, uh, have a... Uh, um, a, a longer way towards the other ramps, so the connection is gonna be taking a little bit longer. But overall, I would say it's looking a pretty fair map, and I'm looking forward for that for sure. So, guys, what do you think about the map? What do you think? Uh, like, if you're in the live stream here right now, you can obviously also giving up your opinion. I really would. Uh, love to discuss about that and see the different amount of opinions maybe on this map and when we can argue a little bit about that i really would enjoy that yo dark how you doing man how come see we'll see as we play it out but maybe the most interesting map so far yeah I think so too. Like, I think... Was there another... Like, is that maybe the best map they have ever put out? I mean, the, the other Season of Strife map is also a good one. But there are way too many spies in the last one. Way too many. Is there a better map which we have ever put out? I think the only other better map I would probably consider was the Season 1 Plus map. The Season 1 Plus map, I would maybe consider as a good map as well. Like, maybe also one, like, top three maps. The Season 1 Plus map, you could go into each zone pretty fast and block out the enemy. Season 1 Plus. Season 2, I don't really have enjoyed it where, you know, everyone was from the pushing from the south. That was not really fair. I didn't like that. Season 2 Plus was the same, so also shit. But Season 2 Plus was a little bit better. And then um, Season T1 was the old map uh, again, but in a redesign, so that was again better. But I would say this one is so far the best map they have ever put out from the first look perspective. Um, after Season 1 Plus, I think. Hey, Hames. Hey, Pix. Hey, First Troop. Welcome to Scene, guys. It's really cool and look nice for fight, but for me, visually, it appears that the regions are very similar because of the ice snow. Oh, yeah, too. <laughs> uh, the goddamn ice and snow. It's gonna hurt the ice. Look at this. How bright this is. Oh, damn. Shit. Hey, Arwen. Welcome, Steam. How are you doing? I'm really looking forward for all these past six and past five, you know, moves. But it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be really interesting. Also, we need to check, are these semi-protected or not? That's going to be interesting to see. Are these semi-protected or not? I didn't realize you have the dire bear back. I didn't fucking realize. We have the dire bear back. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, I already see what's going to happen. Is it the same? Do we have the poison putting on the ground? Or did they... Did they remove that? I think they removed that. <laughs> yeah, they removed the, the poison on the ground. <laughs> Wondering why. Wondering why. Fighting at 3 I'm looking at that will hurt. Zone 1 can't be invaded. Wait, what? Zone 1 can't be invaded? Are you sure? Alright, let's have a look through the Augustorn. 
So that's one day. Oh, so we reduced it. One day, one day, two days, and then Miasma Giant opened. Okay. And then two days for level one's pass. So this is one, two, three, five, seven. So after one week of being into the season, the first pass over the opening. Okay, that's nice. And then the Thunder Rock two and a half days later, two days later than this one, two days later than pass two. Pass two is doesn't really matter, it's just a stature. Then we have one day. One day pass three. Damn, okay. Okay, okay, okay. That's gonna be. Holy shit. So you have one week and then. Two, four, six, seven, eight and a half days later, after pass one opened, we have already pass three open. Damn. Okay, that's crazy. And two, four, and then pass four opens, which is another stature. And then five, six, eight and a half days again, pass five opens, and here's not. It is semi protected. Okay, okay, okay. It is semi protected, and then pass six is not semi protected. Makes sense. And then two, pass four opens. Four and a half days later. Damn, they're really giving us exactly what we want. Like, non-stop fighting. And when level 7 pass opens... Holy fucking shit. It's two... Three and a half days. After pass 6. You have pass 7 opening. Wait, whoa, whoa, hold on. Two? Four? Four and a half days, and then you already take dragon. And then pass five open. Damn, you're right. You're right. You can't invade zone once on this map. Okay, interesting. Interesting. No zone one invasion. Hydra and Neko get your rewards now. I like this type of style. They're speeding this up a lot. Like, they're giving us more chances to fight with more pass openings. Instead of having, like, less August stones, where we're waiting, like, three days, you know, or, like, two days a lot. Like, it's basically... I like that. I really like that. Now people need to think about, you know, is it really so worth them to go hardly on defending like a pass or bastion, right? With so many passes, we're gonna get a lot of deaths if people try to defend everything. Damn. Okay, that's really interesting. I like this August Storm, but we're speeding it up for sure. I think that's a good improvement. Alright guys, so what do you want to talk about first? Season talents or the policy tree? Should my research is finished on my other account? Talents is more fun. Alright. And I would say let's start with the season talents. What should I tell you guys? Season talents are amazing. I like them. So here's the thing: you have 15 points again, right? So you can go one full tree down, and then you have five points left, which you can do one green, one blue. Then you have uh, two left, so you can do two more green ones. I like this. I really like this. Um, I would uh, say it is probably a better season talent tree than the last one we had. It looks better, for sure. So let's start with Mass Warfare. So you hear you're getting your 1% all damage. I think we had this on the last one as well. And then 
return to your city 100% faster, which is maybe something for Wales, but I don't consider this as good. I would just go for the 1% damage here. Reduce cost for resource seeding 5% or you taking melee legions gaining attack. I would definitely go for the resource healing if you're not like heavy based on calves or infantry. If you're just having, I don't know, like Gush Gugu and you resource healing, then go for sure with resource healing. Uh, you also could get the second gold one on one tree. Or oh, did they put that in? But you can get like both of them, not need to choose. Ah, uh, that's nice if that works like this. Um, yeah. Then you have the army group, which is an interesting thing. It is basically a combination of having infantry or calf together. It is basically a mobile um, rally, which you can, you know, put out, which is really interesting. Hey, rookie, welcome to. I really, I really think that's just a good thing, especially for pushing through shock points with infantry. It's gonna be uh, pretty good because it's gonna reduce the amount of time you need to spend on really darkling forts first. You know, then we need to walk up, and then you can push through. Like these army groups gonna basically speeding things up, which I would consider as a good thing as well. And also the, good, uh, the other thing is the sharing merits. You all, will also receive 5% of the merits obtained by other Lords Legions while they are in your army group. You can receive up to 100k merits per week through this method. Each alliance can have up to 10 army groups as well. I like this. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty nice for for people who you know having like one good calf march and then you can put them together instead of like everyone uh, ma uh march like by himself we see army groups might become annoying with like 17 mobile where he's running around the battlefield that's also a good thing uh, a good thing to say um they could be annoying i agree with that we need to see how they're gonna be you know if you can swarm them or not, stuff like that. You know how how the report's gonna be. That's gonna be interesting for sure to see. But from the first look, I think it's good that they're trying to give us new content in terms also for PvP. You know, I think new PvP content is, you know, important for the game, which is not giving us that. You know, which is something else for people to think of. Oh, that's pretty nice. You know, and the best thing is you share merits. You share merits. And then you have here some some buffs for like in front of your calves. Better acuity, uh, increased the uh, engineering of range units by 100%, as already known. Increase weekly merit retention limit by 200k. I would go for this one 100%. Why did I didn't choose that yet? Um, I would use that for 100%. Like 200k merits saving for the next week when you have millions of merits in fighting, especially with a point of that they opening passive wheel faster. This is a must have, in my opinion, for sure. That is for sure a must have. Then you have when you range these and launch a normal attack in the feed, they have 10% chance to reduce the target. Legion defense by 0.5%. Um, can stack up. Increase mouse speed of your Legion units by 10%. I mean, we need to see if that is an... It's probably like a defense debuff, which is gonna get overwritten by, for example, I don't know, anything else what is doing the same thing, you know? It, uh, we need to see. We need to see. 5%, yeah, it's nice, but... It's probably gonna get overwritten by I don't know a skill or something. So I would probably say the if it's gonna be the case that it's gonna be getting overwritten, then for sure the March speed. And then we have here again the increase of the range attack legions when you entering the battle, right? 
Each additional range decent threat enters the battle, increase range decent attack by 1.5%. So if you have five matches, you're increasing that times five. That's pretty nice. And then we having long range warfare back, bro. A long range warfare is fucking back in that particular map. That is amazing. It is good that we're having that back, to be honest. Yes, I said it is broken as fuck. But Archer's losing the only weakness which we're having, which is... um, Sorry, two weaknesses. They don't have AE damage and they have less um, less attack range. So with long range warfare, we're losing one of these weaknesses. But I think this is important for the community... Because a lot of people have mainly finished their archer heroes because of long range warfare, you know. So it is good we ha that we're having now a map with this as an option, you know. So all of these people who invested hard into archers because of long range warfare, because they thought season 10 is going to be a thing now for um, the future seasons. It is good that they have that back so they don't feel like, ah, oh, shit, I invested for nothing. You know what I mean? So I think that is a good uh, good stuff for sure. And then we're having, uh, what is that? Each time your magic unit sees normal attack damage in the field, the tired lose one point. Yeah, nah. It's, nah, not really worth. This mage one is really bad at last compared to the equivalent for archers, yeah. For, uh, what is that? You gain 10% more merits through combat with other players. You can gain up to 100k merit per week through the skill. So, it is... I, I remember the last one where they said um, you're getting more merits, but it's capped at like 100k or something per week. That was absolutely bullshit. So, now they make it like you're getting more merits... But it's capped at 100k, but not your overall match, just through this skill, which is better. That is exactly how it should be, you know. <clears throat> and then, when your infantry and cavalry units are in an army group, they deal 5 percent more counter-attack damage. That is OP as fuck, bro. For fucking Gorush Skogul. Like, imagine you're doing an army group. And then you're having even more counter-attack on your Ghost Skogul. Bro, it's gonna be, it's gonna be busted. They're gonna be insane reports gonna send out everywhere. It's gonna be ridiculous, stupid. With these Ghost Skogul army groups running around and like... Bro, imagine, imagine someone attacking uh, a 1.25 million army group with Ghost Skogul in it. T5 infantry only. Plus, when like every counter attack which you can get, for example, from previous counter attack, that is ridiculously stupid. It's gonna be you're gonna kill off yourself so hard. If you want to get directly the archer tree, you already have to use reset. You have to use first ten points in the primary tree to, to be able to use points on second tree. I mean, we're coming to that later, game Tom. Um, so let's stop on uh, legions and alliance keeps the 3% more damage. Your legions see 3% more normal attack damage. That one is a tricky one, in my opinion. Because keeps gonna be important for like defensive points, you know? Especially for T5 players, um, when they're gonna hold the keep, the 3% extra damage from it would be pretty nice. But, I mean... If you compare the amount of time you spend in a keep to the amount of time you have in open field, I think everyone gonna use burning rage here, right? So, and then we have an exemplar. Exemplar is a really amazing support to, uh, uh, talent tree for the T4 players. That is insane, guys, because select one of your legions on the map as a target of Exemplar. After a short charge up, five surrounding legions uh, gain 10% attack for 15 minutes. Does not apply to legion in the valley or garrison. 
when a light region with the exemplar buff obtain merit, you also receive 5% of the main merit they obtain. Bro, the T4 players are shivering for that. Like, holy shit, the mage T4 players are shivering for that. They're gonna buffing the mages around them and they're getting 5% merits out of that. That is ridiculous stupid. Amazing for the T4 players. Like, I feel like what they what they really made with this 3 is giving the T4 players, especially the low spenders, free to play players, something to shear off. For me, it this is amazing for like the free to play players, especially. You know, they don't feel like they're getting uh, like left over because they can't keep up with the spenders. That is right where this exemplar is a must have for every T4 mage player. Um, on the field Like you you can't you can't think about like guys I I telling you Exemplar is so 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 good for T4 players They're gonna feel like they are you know, they're doing something and they also f like look I'm gonna show you I want to show you Right, let's let's go over to Uh, to my KVK. Right? I'm gonna show you what I mean. So. Uh, gonna have a look. Right? So, myself, for example, I have 4.5 main merits as a 42 main player. Right? Um, Let's go. I need to find an active T4 player. Uh, oh, is, is Kami? No, Kami is not in here. Ah, here, come. Right? No, not this account. That's not the main account. Where's the other one? Is Gwede already over an HH? Probably. We have, uh, I need like a lower T4 card with like good amount of merits. Nah. Mm hmm. Okay, no, I need to check HH. I need to check HH. Okay, um... Uh, let me check, let me check. Here, Dancing Heist, right? He is a good active member, T4, right? He having almost two main merits. Right, he did a lot... I know his stats looking shit, you know, but that's also because of um, he didn't know what to do with his account, so we working on that, right? But he did a lot in this season, right? He he got good stats. I know his his um, better stats are not the greatest ones, but I can tell you he did good amount of work in this KVK, right? So he got two main merits, right? Um, as a 36 main power player with which you would think of he probably he could get more merits um the thing is that his account is not the best one you can also see his uh, youtube channel he have also one where he also show you his account and where you can see that it's not the best looking one um so having that in mind right like let's say someone fucked up his account you know completely like completely completely fucked up right and he's now rebuilding it but he's having a hard time from getting merits exemplar army groups these two particular things helping you especially exemplar in getting more merits you know you can obtain a maximum of 150k merits through this effect each week sure it is only 150k but it's still so so good you know, especially because you can also buff it more with five more line season can gain the exemplar buff, which is now not five. Now it's 10 legions feeding you 5% merits they obtaining. And then you have, when you cast exemplar on one of your legions, the legion and any of your legions surrounding them gain the exemplar buff. This does not count toward the total number of line season who can gain the buff. So you not only you can buff your own, you can also buff 10 players around yourself 
and they giving you 5% of their obtained merits with a particular match. It is insane, guys. It is insane. Like, the T4 players, like, especially the free to play and low spender ones, gonna have a really fun season. And they they seeing the merits going way faster. Uh, it's it's gonna be good. And then we have better preparation, of course, which is gathering, CP recovery, increase the preparation of Revive Legion of the Osiri by 3%, which is now a total of 53%, not um, 50%. Then reduce command points, cost of destroying Darkling Fort by 10, which is nice, to be honest. Uh, when the Legion is gathered in, in Alliance territory, it cannot be attacked, while it's in combat, it cannot enter resource points. Nah, not really, I don't know. Yeah, and then daily warm capacity. I don't know. It's mm -hmm, mm, whatever. So I would say overall the t the season talents are amazing. Like good ones are in there. Hey Floyd, welcome to see. How are you doing, man? Uh, I feel the merit gaining from it is actually so small. Exemplar, but that's terror. Because having in this terror will be OP buff for war. Yeah, I, I'm probably gonna run that as well. I'm probably gonna run terror, like in this terror with a support match, and then putting in, uh, uh, then putting, uh, I need to still work on it, um, and then putting exemplar out. That'll be interesting to see. All right, with that covered, let's jump over to the season policies. Uh, there's not nothing much changed. We have like switched it over a little bit. So you have still your prestige gained and your CP recovery speed, your legion capacity to begin when the resource and elixir production. Then you're having here the first one, which is new, which is grants 50% of enemies gathered resources except gem upon defeating a legion holding gathered resources. Hmm, nah. It's just 50 million each obtained this season. I don't know. Reduce resource gathering speed by 20% except them, but grant 15% more resource upon entering and uh, returning to the city. I think this one is pretty good. I know it sucks, 20% less resource gathering speed, but 15% um, more out of this, it's gonna be like, say, 1 million, right? You're getting 150k extra. And now you need to consider this, how much you can farm for like 50 days compared to 50 million. Right, you can easily get from this scale like 30 million maybe, like double of this what you can get for, from opportunists if you farm actively. So e easy does it is definitely the, the thing which I would consider to go for. When resource healing, when the stamina limit bonus again, which is amazing, plus 50 here. Um, here they changed it. You're still having the damage bonus, right? But you can only choose one. So, Aether, um, Cav, or Infantry, or Archers or Mages. Okay. Um, it's it's a little bit shit for, like, people who having everything. But, you know, whatever. Then, Buried Points again, 20%. Don't wonder. we having already as a standard, um, in your dead over, overview, um, 30% in it. So... You're getting 50% with that on max, plus the 3% from the talent tree, uh, which leads you to 53%. You have make way again, which is duration of 20 instead of 30, which is good, I think. The nerf was ne uh, needed. And then warrant capacity again. Um, they nerf the limit through, it's now 300%. The health care reforms is the same with 2.5%. Medical is like the same here. Um, military expansion again, warrant capacity again. So that is also so far the same. Now we're coming to the free books, which is a little bit different. Let's see what is the shared writing. Uh, 150k from that plus 100k from the army per week for seven, six, seven weeks of fight is a lot. Yeah, exactly, exactly. If you get that max six week, it's like 1.5 million with no extra cost. Exactly, right? That's what I'm talking about. And now we're coming to best point at the season point to see what makes it even better to have this, right? 
Um, so let's check the books out. So they removed the attack, defense, and HP bonus. Um, I think this one is the same. They just removed the additional buff from the buffing the Legion, right? The middle one is different because here you're having now elixir capacity limit plus 100%. And on the right side, Diligence is still the same with 50% Stamina limit bonus. Um, which is interesting. So benev Benevolence is now like basically completely out. So Aether, like, there's no other choice. Aether, you go with Rebrief or Diligence. I would still consider for, like, if you have the troops, you just go for Diligence for the Stamina bonus. If you don't have the troops, you go for Rebrief. For the uh, more elixir production and elixir capacity limit. Um, okay. Let's go for a new playlist. Du, 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 du. Gaming playlist. Let's go for this. All right. Um. So here you have still 100k um dead XC production or 5.5% based on the troops so that's the same and here that's also the same then we have now here a little bit different stuff which is for army groups so either you can increase the mark beat for your army group or the defense or you pick when you're not in an army group legion the two percent more damage when fighting an army group in the field so hmm gonna be interesting um I probably think standalone is the best for like if you like really have no calf or me uh, infantry, you know, or you have just one infantry pair, just go for this and you just send them out on the field like it, like they are, right? Then just go for standalone. So, um, yeah. Then again, uh, ready and garrison damage. That's the same. Uh, shared glory is giving you. An additional extra 10% merit gain rate when you are in an army group. So they really want you to play with the army group, guys. They really want you, right? When you're having bitter end, which is the same way as it uh, was in the other season. And now we're having two interesting things here. Because we're having Pellet Cave, which gives you one elixir for every one of your level 4 plus units that die. And it seems like it's capped by daily, so 1 million daily. In the same way for this, gain 1 melt for every one of your level 4 plus units that die. Melt obtained via this policy this season. So this is completely per season. This one seems to be capped at one main per day, which is interesting because they basically giving you stuff back in return. So you can either fight more or you can buy like actually can do more, right? You can fight more because you're getting elixir back and you're getting more elites, which you can then also use to buy pet skills, speed ups, Medals, elixir, you know, so they ending up giving you even more stuff with that Right, so it is basically something To give you for your deaths, which is I mean you're getting 53% back plus you're getting merits and elixir Why not? You know, it's a good thing. It's gonna probably gonna you know Make people not feel like it's a complete waste now. You know, now we're getting something in return. You know, now we can also buy, especially for the D4, this merit one is gonna be pretty awesome. 
because with that they can maybe also then consider to buy from the merit shop like these pet skills on one star right so it doesn't feel like like a complete waste now in my opinion it still sucks to lose your troops no matter what it still sucks but it is not as worse anymore as it used to be in my opinion I want to debate you to let your troops die. Oh man. Alright, I think that's so far everything covered from the new stuff. So 40 minutes of recording here. Damn. Um alright guys. Um let's have a last look on the on the poll. 33 votes. What do you think about the new scene of Stream of Life? 44% of you saying amazing. 35% saying it's good but could be better. 12% saying man not my favorite and 9% saying disliking it to 100%. All right, so most of you seems like enjoying this map for sure. Um, all right, that was it for the video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, thanks everyone for watching. Drop a comment in, uh, uh, drop a comment under the video, and let me know your opinion about the new map, about the new policy tree, and also season 10 and tree. And then we can maybe discuss a little bit in the comment section. Alright guys, I wish you a great rest of the day. Have a great start in the next day. Stay heavy on and we see us then on the next video.